Hello again, Conse. I recently did a video on farming Fatalis Evil Eyes using cone baiting with uh, Frostcraft Greatsword. Uh, everybody seemed to find that video fairly useful, but there were a, a contingent of people who found that quite difficult to do. And I understand why. I have done a video, and by the way, right now I'm just showing you the sort of runs that you can get with this new method, this sort of updated method. You can see 613. This is probably the best run I had in the... We did like 40 minutes of testing non-stop. I'm going to upload the, the raw footage to, uh, to YouTube or, uh, or something for Patreons. I'm not 100% sure. But um, yeah, basically what I did was like 30 or 40 minutes of just testing in a row. And I tried to just get a really consistent method. And all of our runs were like below 9 minutes. We got They varied from like 6 to 9 minutes. Usually on average like 7 or 8. Um, yeah, and this is using the Insect Glaive. So th the issue with the previous run was it was very heavily reliant on Cone RNG. Now the fact is I did do a video on uh, on Cone RNG and baiting out the cones. It's actually fairly consistent and fairly easy to, uh, easy to do if you position properly. Uh, that said... Uh, people wanted a more consistent method, and so if you're still struggling with it, this should hopefully be a, a little bit easier. Unfortunately, there is a bit of a, a concern here, like, you know, you're either going to have it to be really easy to do, really consistent to do, or fast to do. You know, you gotta, you got to, like, pick one and a half or two of them. You can't have all three at once. And so this one is going to take a little bit of knowledge of Insect Glaive play. Um, now, all the standard tips from the cone baiting video still apply. If you want to bait cones specifically, which you don't have to do for this method, actually, while he's on the ground, you've got quite a few good openings. But I am just showing off here that you can make him stand back up by getting on the cannons. Um, that said, the main issue with the cone method is when you're standing at cone range, there is a fairly good chance he can use the triple fireball move. And so what I found where a lot of people were struggling to deal with uh, triple fireball is they would be st standing within sort of cone range for baiting, but getting a lot of triple fireball procs. And so that's what I'm showing you how to punish now. Uh, you can see you can do a pogo and you sort of move in towards his face. Not 100% safe, but it's not a problem either. If you're worried about getting hit by the AoE, Move inwards towards his chest before you come out for the final attack. Um, you can see I'm whiffing quite a bit, but as you as you get more and more practice with this, it becomes a, a lot more consistent. Right now, I'm a lot more consistent with it than I was uh, at the start. But as uh, I, I recorded this footage like two weeks ago, and I just never got around to making the video, unfortunately. Um, now, there are other punishes you can do. There are Obviously, con baiting is still a thing. Like, stand in the right distance for con. See the con baiting video if you haven't already. Um... Yeah, there are a couple of other punishes you can do uh, during some of his uh, his upwards attacks. You can do like the aerial claw to get a few extra hits in. But if I'm going to be completely honest with you, it's like kind of an advanced piece of tech if you don't know how to play Insect Glaive. And I am trying to keep this as accessible as possible even if you don't use the weapon. Uh, Pogo sticking is fairly easy to do uh, once you've messed around with it in the training area. But some of the aerial claw openings are a little bit more advanced. So I'm going to leave them out because they're not much. They're not good, great DPS anyway. And if you're standing within current range, you're probably not going to get those attacks regardless. You see me go for something stupid there. You can actually go for that consistently. It's just not 100% safe, depending on his choice of moves. Uh, unfortunately, I whiff it, but it's not a huge deal. You whiff the few moves, what difference does it make? It means that you've wasted a couple of seconds. It's, it's really not a huge deal. So yeah, the nice thing about the Insect Glaive... Oh, and now we're going to see some of his, his downwards move. So when he does the long bite, you can do a, uh, a Tornado Slash from like an idle sweep into Tornado Slash. When he does the quick bite, you can just like poke. Uh, most of his other downward moves, like the snap drag, for example, and the fiery explosion into flying, they're generally not punishable. Um, like this move here, for example, there's really just nothing you can do when he decides to use it. Uh, however, there are a few pogo six openings too. When he does the like uh, like this one here, for example, the tail slam, you can grab a free pogo. When he does the move where he like walks backwards and does his breath, you can also pogo there. So there are a lot of really obvious pogo openings for, um, and I call it pogo. I just mean the downwards thrust. You can see by the video. There are a lot of good openings. Now, it's essential, and I'm going to talk about the video, uh, the set at the end of the video. Uh, it is essential to get the to get the first horn break in first phase. Um, I'm not going to explain the details as to why I'm going to do a video on like advanced mechanics regarding like horn breaks and, and flinch thresholds and stuff like that soon. But basically, you need to get the first part break in first phase. Or basically, you need to get the first part break before you start doing things like binding or, or using the roaming ballista. Um, and that is what the next method is. You see I retenderized the head there, and I did that for quite a specific reason. Uh, the next part of the strategy is to throw on a mantle with heavy artillery decorations, or just have them in the set. Again, we'll talk about the set at the end of the video. Um, throw a smoke bomb on the roaming ballista or two, just to make sure it's fully covered. Get on it, and then shoot away at Fatalis. A full roaming ballista on Fatalis will be enough to get it to, uh, to fall down most of the time. If he is unenraged and untenderized on the chest, then you will probably run out of ammo before you manage it, but it's not a huge deal if that happens, don't worry. Uh, you can see here we're just going for the chest, we're just using all of our ballista bullets. Um, once you've done that, uh, the next step is to then grab, if you weren't able to finish it, and also if he's coning, then just get away. You can superman dive if you, uh, you can superman dive if you want. Uh, I, I just, I decided to be clever with, uh, with the Aerothos, but you can do superman twice in a row and it's really, and it's, uh, just as fine. We are basically waiting for Fatalis to come as close as, 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 as we can get him to be. 
um, so that we can use the the advance the move properly. You can see we're going to use our one shot binders, and we're going to use the ballista to finish him off. So if you aren't aware, chat the roaming ballista does basically enough damage to get a free knockdown on Fatalis. Um, punishing these is a little bit weird. I tend to just like <laughs> Unga and Bunga. It's not really. I mean, look, you just just spam your tornado, tornado slashes. It's not a big deal. He'll be fairly close to the part break regardless. Um, but uh, yeah, so the roaming ballista, we used one of the binders, obviously. The roaming ballista that we used was not enough to get him down because we didn't have him at raged and tenderized. However, all it takes is a few more regular ballista bullets. They're much more efficient at knocking Fatalis down. Um, and, and so they'll, 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 make the, they'll get him down uh, much quicker than the roaming ballista will. And so it's fairly easy to uh, make up for any, any missed shots or, or any non-rage, non-weakness uh, exploits. This is the punish that I go for while he's down, although obviously try not to whiff the face. Um, and by this point, his head is basically done. Uh, now, all you got to do is bait a couple more cones uh, or punish some of his downwards attacks. Like, for example, as I was saying, when he does the, uh, when he does the, the small sweep, you want to just do little pokes. Uh, the snap and drag can't really be punished, but don't worry about it because he gets up after it anyway. Um, yeah, you've got your mantle, obviously, still temporal. You just got to wait for a cone or two or something. Um, and it should be very, very close to breaking. Um, as you can see, we missed a couple of uh, hits in the first phase, so it's going to take a little bit longer, but it's really not a huge deal. And of course, you have the second binder all the way in the back half of the map. I couldn't be bothered to go get it because I, th I thought he was like one hit away from breaking. So I was a little bit lazy. Also, here's the punish for, uh, for when he does the long bite that I like to use. You can do an idle sweep if you're not positioned properly for it. Um, or if you're far away from it, uh, you can uh, you can do a, an idle B. But yeah, that, that is the punishes for when he's on the ground. He does that a lot in phase one too, so that's a really nice punish. But uh, yeah, between this and if you'd use the second binder that's on the uh, left-hand side of the map, you should probably know where that is by now, um, it, you'll you'll have the horn break in no time at all. As you can see, a little bit of an unlucky run here. Uh, I kind of mistimed some stuff, and we still got a really quick time. Um, very consistent horn breaks. There are so many punishable moves now that you're not relying on cone RNG for all of your DPS. You can get triple fireballs you can punish. Uh, you can punish him while he's on the ground. There's a whole bunch of moves you can punish, and that's a seven-minute run. And obviously, if you get better RNG, it'll be faster, and if you get worse RNG, it'll be slightly slower. This is a lot more consistent, but it's also, obviously, a lot more difficult to pull off. Second phase can be trivialized by using both binders, but other than that, you, you are still reliant on, like, decent positioning with Insect Glaive. Like. Um, and so I've tried my best. I've now got two methods out. I've got a brain dead method that requires Frostcraft uh, Greatsword, which is, like, zero IQ, incredibly easy to do, but relies on cone RNG. I've done a video on baiting out cones, so cone RNG shouldn't be a problem. And for anybody who's still struggling, I now have this method that takes a bit more skill, but is a lot more consistent. As I said, we did like uh, a bunch of runs in a row and they were all like seven or eight minutes, um, uh, with some as fast as like nearly six minutes. Yeah, so hopefully that covers everything. I guess I'll talk about the set now. So this is the set that I'm using. You can see it is a light break press set using uh, three Kaiser, two Brachidium. You can run whatever you like, basically just use whatever DPS insect glaive set you like. It doesn't make much of a difference. But this is what I'm using. Don't worry if you don't have the decorations. Uh, you can obviously just swap out the three points of attack. Um, that'll take you down to uh, less than four. So you'll have to run another point of critical eye to get back up to 30 affinity. So that agitator and weakness expert can take us to 100. Um, but other than that, then you can put like health boost in the uh, in the other two remaining slots. And then if you don't have, for example, part breaker health boost, you can just replace this with a regular old part breaker decoration uh, as shown. And same below. Or you can put part breaker slash whatever other skills you have. Same thing with the evasion plus decoration is not a huge deal. Same thing with the critical plus decoration. You can just put in a regular crit boost echo. If you don't have attack plus, not a big deal. Just put in a single point of attack here. Who cares? Look, I get a lot of people complaining about the 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 skill the decorations, but the fact is, even if you were to run like complete garbage decorations in these sets, you, all you'd be losing out of is like three or four points of attack, which is like a few percent uh, difference. It makes no meaningful difference. Um, so it's really easy to jiggle the set around to, to get it to work according to your decorations. Um, I, hopefully I don't need to hold your hand on that, but uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, the set is fairly typical. We've got Airborne because we're doing a lot of pogo sticking, obviously. Uh, claw Boost is really nice. The three points of Part Breaker are essential to guarantee the Part Break in Phase 1. Um, and other than that, it's mostly just standard DPS stuff. Uh, I realize I've changed the set a lot now, so let me actually refresh it and so I can end with it on the, uh, on the right set so people don't get confused. There we go. Yeah, so this is the set. Uh, very typical stuff. Master's Touch, Agitated Secret. We're just trying to get a, a nice amount of affinity. Um, yeah, you can see I've got Heavy Artillery on the Temporal Mantle. You don't have to do that yourself. Uh, because I only use the, the Ballistas and stuff while I have Temporal Mantle on, because it stops you from getting knocked off, I just put them in here. But if you don't have the slots, obviously, 
swap out your two points of attack. Also, I'm going to put those back on just so people don't get confused with my set. But yeah, it, it's very easy to navigate this set. I, I feel like I'm talking a little bit too much here. Like, I think 95 or 99% of you guys know how easy it is to jiggle these sets around. But I do get a non negligible number of people complaining about the sort of decorations I use. And uh, I don't know. It's um, hopefully I've done enough of an explanation for you to be able to jiggle them around according to your wills. But uh, yeah, I think that basically covers everything. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. But otherwise, uh, I will let you go. Take it easy. Bye-bye.